Hello everyone, this is Kessler from Edureka and today we'll be discussing about the Google Cloud Console. So before moving forward, if you guys want to know more about the Google Cloud Platform and the various services it offers, plus if you want to know how to create a free tier Google account, make sure you check out our videos, the link to which is given in the description box below. And if you got any other topics that you think that Edureka should cover for Google Cloud Platform, let us know in the comment section below. So let's get started. So the moment you create your free account or your professional enterprise account, you'll be redirected to this page. Now here you have the option to go to console. Let's click on that. Now console will redirect you to this page and this is basically the summary of all the Google Cloud Platform services that you are going to use from your account. Now this thing is based on project basis, the dashboard, because the billing is done on a project basis. You can select your project and the dashboard will change. So let's see what are the different features of this dashboard and what all are present in the summary. Now on the left hand side you have the project info, the project name, project ID and the project number. These are the details of your project which you can change by selecting your project. Coming down you have the resources. I'll tell you about this in a bit. All the resources which you create will appear here. Coming down you have the trace section where you can trace your data from the past seven days or the past seven months. Everything is customizable. Coming down, we have the getting started section. In this, we have the various tutorials which are offered by Google to help the beginners learn how to create an instance and various other things which are easy, but they need a certain guidance. So coming on to the top, here we have the API overview. As you can see, the API requests, on the right hand side, we have the Google Cloud Platform status. It shows the status whether the service is running or is it in a halt state or it's not running. Coming down, we have the billing estimate. Now this section provides you with the billing details in a real time scenario. Coming down, we have the error reporting where we can see if we have any errors in any of our instances or in any of our resources which we have created. Coming down, we have the news section in which we get the news related to the Google Cloud Platform and learn about the new things. Finally, coming down, we have the documentation part where we can learn about the different resources and the different services which are offered by Google. Now, let me show you how to create a resource and then we'll see how we can manage it through the dashboard. So guys, here I am creating a VM instance. If you want to know more about creating a VM instance and various other things, make sure you check out our tutorial video. Select your machine type and the memory you need according to your requirement and just tap on the create button and it will create your instance within seconds. As you can see there, we have a pop up that instance Edureka 1 is underutilized. You can save an estimated $16 per month by switching it to the small type. So, this is one of the most important features of Google Cloud Platform is providing you with instance details and automatic resizing according to your needs. And you can save a lot if you follow these pop ups which appear here now and then. On the right hand side, you can see we have the info panel of a particular instance. You have the labels and the monitoring part. Now, let's go back to our home section of the console. Here you can see under the resources, we have a compute engine, one instance. As you can see, our API requests have gone up. Now, coming on to the top right hand side, you have the customize option. As you can see, you can enable the compute engine. You can see the CPU percentage of the utilization. And here you have the SQL also. You can see what all disk storage and space are utilized by all your resources. So as you can see, our compute engine is showing instance utilization and the CPU utilization. Now let me create one SQL instance. I'm going to create a MySQL instance as the PostGRE one is in beta format. Select your location and your zone and just tap on the create button and within minutes your SQL instance will be created. While the instance has been created, as you can see here on the right hand side, we have the notification bar where you get all the information about the instances which you created or deleted or are being in progress. The top hand side we have the first free trial status as if you are using a free trial account. You have the Google Cloud Shell 
and you have the feedback form and the help form. Now on the left hand side, on this taskbar, you have the various services which are offered by Google, such as the compute engine, the storage in the networking services, monitoring services, and the various development tools. Moving downward, we have the big data tools and the IoT course. The moment our instance is created, as you can see here, we have a short indication of the storage being used, which is the default storage. In the info panel, you have the monitoring as well as the label section. Now let's get back to our home. As you can see here under the resources section, I have a compute engine resource and one Cloud SQL instance. And under Cloud SQL, here you can see we have the database and the disk byte used, which is indicating which I have used is 1.42. 3 GB. Now on the right hand side, you'll see that create Cloud SQL instance Edrega SQL 3 has been created. So you can also trace the data which you are sending from one resource to another on the trace section here. And below in the documentation, if you want to know more about the compute engine, the various services it offers, like the Kubernetes engine, the machine learning, the big data, and the IoT services. Now, when we go to the activity section, all you can see here are the various activities you performed so that everyone can keep a track and no one can jeopardize anything in the organization. So as you can see, I've created certain instances and I've deleted certain instances. Here I've got a failed error which was reported to me via the notification as well as the error section which was there on the console. You can filter it according to your projects according to the categories of the configuration, data access, development, monitoring, or the platform. And you can also filter it according to the resource type. So coming back to the dashboard. So guys, this is it. I hope you got a pretty good idea about what the Google Cloud Console and the dashboard looks like. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it, and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!